What are your priorities right now as bug owners? What are you trying to accomplish first? Uh, well, you know, I, I think the first thing we're trying to do is get an understanding, of, especially with the draft coming up. I think that's that's the priority, right? So, spending a lot of time with John and David, um, <clears throat> going through sort of who are the possibilities. I mean, we all sort of know um, the players, but sort of where do we rank them? Where do they rank them? Understanding that. I think that's sort of number one, and I think number two for us is also um, getting a handle on the business operations. Um, it's kind of amazing that um, you know before we bought the team, you're you're not allowed to do really that much. Mm -hmm. um, you can't spend a lot of a lot of time with the team. So I think um, yeah, at least for today, is meeting with a number of the folks and sort of focusing more on the business operations, and then obviously the basketball operations. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we've met a couple of the players. Obviously, we had uh, Jonas and uh, Brandon come out for the uh, lottery, which was great. Great to have those guys there. I thought they had a great presence and really represented the team really well. Um, you know, we'd love to meet the players over time, but as, as Mark said, I mean, there's June 26 is going to come here before you know it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, the number two pick is a, an amazing opportunity in this draft. But also there's the you know 31, 36. You know, we've got some great spots to fill, and so there's a lot of work to be done there. We're going to see some of the prospects. Uh, working out here as soon as we leave here today, and, uh, and it's the two things. They're obviously very related, the business side and the, uh, and the basketball side, but there's a lot of work to do. Do you, do you have some thoughts yourself on some of the top players and who you like and uh, handicap them a little bit? Look, I think as fans, um, we've seen a number of them play, and we actually had the opportunity to meet a number of the players at the lottery. Yeah, both Joel and Andrew Wiggins were there. Uh, both actually, you know, were great. I thought they handled themselves really well. It's um, a big moment for them. Yeah, it's a big moment. They really seem to like be enjoying what they're going through, and they should. It's a it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for them. Um, you know, everyone's kind of uh, vectoring on these top four players that I think are likely to be there with the number two pick. We don't have the uh, choice, but we've got a very good choice. Mm -hmm. So, have you consulted with local business people here and met them and? Heard what they had to say about their views about the Bucks and perspectives. Yeah, we've met with a number of local business leaders, mm -hmm. and such you know, as can you say who you spoke with? I, I don't. I think we'd have to ask them. So I apologize on that. But there's a number of them that we've met with who are going to be investors, and you know, um, I think they're going through the process right now with the MBA mm -hmm. of getting approved. And part of it is we wanted to have a number of local businessmen um, and folks who are very important to the community, be part of what we're trying to do. Can you say just in general how many people we're talking about that might potentially be local investors in the team? Sure. Um, I think it'll be somewhere between five to ten. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. The transaction, you know, it's very clear that if the Milwaukee is going to keep an NBA team, there's going to be a new arena here. The league has made that mandate, and I think that um, so from our perspective, you asked the question, I think, when we were talking, what's the, what's the backup plan or alternative B? And the answer is there is no plan B for that. Um, and I think we have the resources between Senator Cole's you know, generous commitment, our own personal involvement, and then really the, it has to be a net uh, positive you know, outcome for the community. And I think that, uh, that it can be, obviously. So. You see something I sense much bigger than an arena here. I mean, there's a lot of talk in town of linking various cultural and yeah. artistic institutions. Is that sort of the vision you anticipate as well? This isn't about just plopping a new arena and vacant piece. Yeah, I think that that would be, I honestly think that would be a far step short of what would really be ideal. When you, you look at the, you know, Staples Center is a great example out in Los Angeles. When they built that, it was very much isolated downtown. It was, uh, it was just an arena. If you go there today, um, there is a whole development around it, and it's a very, very lively. Uh, it's enervated. It's a great, you know, source for people to a place for people to meet and hang out, both at games and when there are not games there. Does and that potential exist? You think somewhere around where the Bradley Center is right now to locate an arena and ancillary development? We hope so. Yeah. I think very much so. That would so, be the goal. Yeah, you know, we haven't really cracked the uh, the book yet on the whole arena part of it. That is something we've actually uh, talked to a number of developers uh, and designers and folks who are going to come in and make I think, pitches to us in the next month or so and give us their thoughts about it. There's been a lot of work done locally, so you want to take what has been done and, and, and uh, have the benefit of that, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then I think once you have come up with a, a thought process on what you're trying to do and where you're trying to do it, then the, then the process of actually making it happen is something that... Uh, you know, we'll move in high gear on.
Um, is it your intent to start the season in October, November with Coach Drew and John Hammond as general manager? We were asked the question earlier today. I think when you look at the history of the general manager, assistant general manager, coach, you know, these guys have all had success in the NBA at a high level, right? And, uh, and that's a good place to start. Um, and that's really where we are. We're in the first week. We're, we're certainly working hard with, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the existing folks on the draft. You know, we flew out here with, with them last night, spent a couple hours with them. Um, and I think that they've got, you know, a commitment to do the kinds of things that we want. We don't want to have a competitive team. We want to have a team that actually wins eventually. I mean, wins the championship. And so that's a cultural bias, I think, of an entire organization. And it's not just the the GM, the assistant GM, and the coach, it really is the whole organization that needs to really, you know, embrace that. Well, I guess, how, how would I interpret that then? Would that suggest that you're sticking with these guys when the season starts, or? I think our goal right now, day by day. our goal right now is we're very supportive of these guys. They're, they're trained professionals. We've had limited interaction with them, but it's positive. Their resumes are obviously very capable. We haven't been, you know, interviewing other people or, you know, talking to other folks about the job, so. Um, that's where we are right now.